Um, yeah, well, it's like I'm, I'm just rushing a little bit, so <laughs> uh, thank you for coming for this session. Um, my name is Marcos Lemma, um, as uh, she explained. So maybe I'll, I'll tell a little bit about myself first. Um, I, we came here like to for the GIG, the Global Innovation Gathering. It's a, it's a global gathering for many hubs um, around the world, uh, especially focusing on AfriLabs, uh, which is um, the network of hubs in Africa. It started some, some time, uh, the network started like two years ago, but it's really growing from, from five to seven to uh, 20, more than that. Right now, actually, we have around 30 hubs. Um, so basically, like um, I am representing one of the hubs. It's called ISADIS. Uh, it's based in Ethiopia, so I am one of the co-founders of this hub. Uh, we are um, running like this innovation spaces in uh, in, in Addis, but now the, that also network really growing so, so much. Like we have in Cairo now, in Alexandria, um, even in Germany, in Weimar. Um, so it's, it's it's really a growing network network of um, hubs. Um, but today, <coughs> uh, I'm not talking about that, but rather I'm telling you a story uh, about what's happening like in two Ethiopian uh, villages. Um, the um, so some year back, um, the American visionary guy, Nicolas Negroponte, a lot of people know him from the MIT Media Lab uh, and also one laptop per child project afterwards. A lot of, peop a lot of people talk about it, you know. It's, it's always, um, um, he's becoming a, a, a media attention because a lot of people actually think criticizing his, his method of working on, on technology. On the other hand, a lot of people also appreciate what he's doing. Um, so uh, with him uh, and his team like in MIT, uh, and Tuftus University uh, from from Cambridge, uh, we actually trying to uh, do a kind of um, a research project. So it's very very simple idea. Um, so we are assuming that if we um, if the kids can teach themselves using technology how to read, they can also teach themselves like how how to do all the other education. So basically, uh, without teacher, they can teach themselves. So um, we call it like technology as a teacher. Um, the assumption is that like um, kids from anywhere in the world, even though they've never been exposed to any kind of formal or informal kind of education, um, technology can really help them to, to learn by themselves. So uh, we, we selected these two uh, areas, uh, Wenji and Walenjite by name. It's completely um, far from everything. Um, the kids probably know about um, alphabets from money notes. Um, or maybe like some plastic bottles uh, tossing around, but basically like they, there is no any education, there is no electricity, uh, there is no uh, mobile network in that area. So we chose like this to completely, completely outside the world <laughs> villages uh, in Ethiopia, uh, and we gave them tablets uh, with all the apps installed in it. Um, and then we just wait for them just to see. I mean, we didn't even show them the, where the power button is uh, or what actually they are dealing with, you know, just very experimental. Um, so, uh, after, after seven minutes, the first kid in, in, in one of the sites, actually, he managed to find the power button. So, he, he managed to power it up. Uh, and then, of course, like one person, uh, one kid's know means everybody knows it, uh, because they really share uh, a lot of information with each other. Um, but that's really like it, it was really already amazing because we we thought maybe they will figure out what it is like in a like in a day in a day or two uh but it, it only took them like like seven minutes to figure out actually the power button which is a motorola tablet so it's really hidden like behind a, a tablet um but after that like in a week actually they already um started to like completely um, know how to function with a tablet. So they, they really use their fingers like to go from one, one side to the other and then they go back and then they cancel. Uh, you know, like they do all these kind of like things what we don't normally assume like uh, people cannot do unless they have a kind of guidance or a manual or kind of that kind of stuff. So, um, and then after, after a week, they already start to uh, play play video, right, uh, because it's, and then they, they also wait until the video finishes or the music, they just start to listen to it, uh, and then and, and, and a month, they already uh, start to say uh, ABCD, so, I mean, their, their language is not English, uh, we are installing like this application in English, um, and then they already start to say ABCD and then try to associate the, the sound, so now after a year, they are already in the cusp of reading, so basically like they are reading cats and dog and horses, 
um, they also play with like uh, different um, chain games. Uh, there, there will be like um, a video how the kids are working on later on. Uh, maybe Geraldine will tell us about that, but there is a, a video about that. Maybe if you are interested, you can you can see that. Um, so we, we the early finding was very amazing. I mean, our um, uh, our metrics to measure that was very simple. So we collect. There is an uh, application is running at the background. It's called a BG collector. Uh, it collects all this information, and we just analyze that data, like how how much time they spend on the tablets and what kind of activities they are doing on the tablet. Um, so they spend more than 10 hours in the first few weeks uh, on the tablets. Really amazing. I mean, um, we are targeting like kids between four between four to 10 years old. Um, so basically, like they are really completely. Um, crazy about the, the tablets what they have and usually like this kind of place also like really like poverty stricken places so this is something they also appreciate to have I mean this is the most precious thing they own in their life um, yeah so um, this is a project we have been doing like now for two sites but we are expanding also other sites to see how they will also react when they learn uh, their own local languages so basically uh, when we when we started first we had a lot of problems uh, when it comes to timestamp something that we never really taught, uh, or Motorola never taught about this uh, when they designed their products. Uh, for instance, when, we, when our mobile is off, we don't just keep trying to uh, put it on, right? Because we know that like, it needs to be charged. Uh, but in this case, the, the kids, they don't know. So they, they just keep trying to turn it on uh, and the battery is completely drained, which means like the timestamp always go back to the back date when the manufacturing time, like 90, 70 or something. Um, so this all created like a lot of problem for us, like in, in the beginning. Uh, so we, we need to like work on GPS and how that can actually be fixed. Um, and, and, and the other thing is also like we are using this normal um, mobile applications with ice cream, octopus, you know, like they, they can never really associate this kind of words into their real life. Uh, and then we, we really learn a lot on the process, like we, what to include and what we should actually include. And we ask them, for instance, to take a picture of their surroundings, what they believe uh, is right to be included like in the tablet, and then we just translate that to English and, and use it in the, in, in the application. Uh, so it's, it's like it's been a lot of learning processes, and we learn also a lot of stuff, um, a lot of psychological stuff, a lot of social stuff. For instance, they don't have power in their house, and uh, when they have the tablets, I mean, their house is completely light up, right? So in the night, like, everybody is um, working a little bit late than normally. So that also a little affects their, their life, because usually they sleep very early, but now they don't sleep early anymore because uh, their house is full of light. And so we, we learn a lot of, like, this kind of, like, small things, but very important things, which really affect also in urban life. So, I mean, in, in long term, now we don't sleep too early anymore, right? So that, that kind of thing is really, technology really affects that kind of uh, part as well, but also like makes them a bit more productive in, in a way. Um, yeah, so, uh, so far, like this is, a, this is a progress, but uh, we haven't finished the, the, the research yet. The final um, outcome will, will come uh, probably like in 12 months. Um, so we know, uh, we are, or we can say confidently, kids can learn just using a tablet or a technology or not. Uh, this is something we're going to see. But the early findings show very positive outcome um, so far. Thank you very much. I'll be very happy to answer your questions. Uh, it's, I, I don't have a presentation uh, right now, but I, I could actually show you a lot of pictures and when the kids are working on. But the video, I think, might be very interesting. Uh, maybe, Geraldine, if you... Okay, uh, thank you so much, Marcos. Um, so in case any of you want to see what this village looks like and the kids that Marcos just spoke about, um, I'll be showing a rough cut of a film I made uh, that features this place amongst other places in uh, Ethiopia, in Rwanda, in Kenya and in South Africa at 1845 today on Stage C. And you're welcome to watch that with us and get a visual impression of the things Marcos just spoke about. Thank you. Hi. Uh, one of the problems with Nicholas Negroponte is sometimes his publicity goes beyond reality. 
and uh, he claimed that the kids in the Washi Crater area, which is a sort of tourist area, it's only it's not that far from Addis, but the, he claimed they had never seen any print at all. But you've, in a sense, you you said well, they have, although incidental. But the second claim he made was that the kids hacked Android, which wasn't actually true. They they pressed the reset button twice on the side of the tablet to restore the camera, but. It, the reason I, I'm asking this is I've been in Africa and gone to these sites and seen them fail time and time again. And w what's needed is really objective research and not Negroponte's hyperbole, because he's a sales guy, he wants to make money on tablets. But is there any plans for objective research as opposed to the people who are involved in the project reporting back on it? Because that in Africa, that counts, I think. Yeah, uh, I mean, thank you for raising that. Uh, I mean, honestly, like uh, the, the story of hacking, it's it's very subjective, I would say. I mean, it's, it's how you say it. Uh, when when we have like this application um, and we completely block the camera version uh, so that the kids don't don't generate a lot of data, because in the beginning we we found out that actually like they generated a lot of data that we cannot really control anymore. So we completely blocked the camera version. Um, and then, but they found actually a kind of a backdoor to work around the, the camera. So there is a small application where you can enable the camera for a few seconds and then they found that. So it's more like, of course, I mean, the way he presented it, it sounds very, um, you know, like very commercial in a way. Uh, but, but in reality, it's just how we define hacking. Um, uh, and I, I mean, if you ask me, I would also agree that like they, they, they found a kind of a backdoor to work around the camera. Uh, but uh, but this is actually like beyond Negro Ponte or beyond one laptop per child. But this is more scientific um, research. So MIT is involving a lot on this, and Tuftus University and Georgia University. Um, there are also like a lot of experts behind this to uh, assess this one. That's why I say actually like probably like it's we don't make a bold statement about uh, the outcome, but rather the early findings show a lot of positive outcomes so far, which is which is a great thing. Do you feel your question answered? Okay, so if there are no more questions, I'd like to say thank you, Marcus Lerma, you. <laughs> for dropping by so quickly. Thank you very much.